the much beloved Malalai Joya. Malalai Joya has been called the most outspoken woman in Afghanistan. She's the youngest member of parliament elected to the National Assembly and she's been suspended from parliament for speaking the truth, for speaking out on behalf of women's issues, for being an advocate for women and children in Afghanistan, and facing and challenging and speaking up against the warlords, drug lords, and criminals in her country. She has faced four assassination attempts on her life. She's had numerous death threats. She's been physically attacked in parliament. And yet, in face of that, She's undertaking projects in Afghanistan to help the people. She has an orphanage, literacy classes for girls, free health care, and the documentary of her life is a Sundance Award winning documentary that we'll be showing later this week at SFU Harbor Center on Tuesday. And we're very pleased she's also been nominated for the Sakharov Peace Award by the European Parliament. She's truly an inspiration uh, to us all. When we met her the day that Malalai came to Vancouver, and we met her in Vancouver, I think was one of the happiest days for us in Stop War in Vancouver, to welcome Malalai to Vancouver. She is loved by the Afghan people, loved by freedom and peace-loving people of Vancouver. Please give Malalai a very warm welcome. And Afghanistan among the country 
factories, we are trafficking of women and children for sexual exploitation is on its work. But this is a lie and throwing dust on the eyes of people of the world. In reality, the condition of Afghan women not change to positive, but they are suffering more than ever. And instead of going into much details of the women's rights catastrophe in Afghanistan, let me give you a few shocking examples to describe the terrible conditions of Afghan women in our country. The number of suicide cases among Afghan women was never such high as it is today. According to official figures, 250 suicide cases have been reported in the first six months of the 2007. 18-year-old Samaya hung herself by a rope because she was to be sold to a 60-year-old man. Another woman called Bibi Gold locked herself in animal stables and committed suicide. Then her family found nothing except her bones. According to Uniform Survey, 65% of the 50,000 widows in Kabul and thousands of women all over Afghanistan see suicide as the only option to get rid of their miseries and dissolution. Over 95% Afghan women suffer from depression. Every 28 minutes, a woman dies in Afghanistan during childbirth. The life expectancy for Afghan women is only 45 years. Survey says that 80% marriages are forced. Commanders of the Northern Alliance fundamentalists, in the areas of their control, they are kidnapping and rape girls and women. According to Oxfam survey, just one in five girls in primary age in also one in 20 in secondary school are enrolled. 200,000 children in the areas under the control of the Taliban are completely deprived of education. Prominent anti-warlord women who dare to work outside of their houses are threatened and killed. Some activist women like Nadia Anjuman, Safiya Majan, Shikiba, Sangha Amaj, Shaima Rezaei, Zakia Zaki, and this list can be prolonged that recently has been killed in Afghanistan. This list shows the disastrous condition of Afghan women today. Any kind of crimes and brutalities are exercised against women, but in reality prevails across Afghanistan and no one is prosecuted for such crimes. Although some women in Kabul and few cities have access to education and job, but life of women in rural areas is more worse than ever. The Western media tries to trumpet that it was the U.S. involvement in Afghanistan which brought some rights to women which were never exercised in the history of Afghanistan. But this is also a false statement. Let me read out a portion of article of the New York Times published on the November 8, 1959. Afghanistan's woman left the V, a new world of freedom, spiritual as well as sartorial has been opened to the women of this Muslim nation after centuries of seclusion. Respected friends, Six years after the US-led attack on Afghanistan, but our devastated country is still chained in the fetters of the fundamentalist warlords, and it's like an unconscious body betting its last. The Bush administration handed over the power to those who have been tested in the past and are killers, looters, and as dark-minded, evil, and cruel as the Taliban. The only sector in which Afghanistan has progressed beyond imagination is the drugs cultivation and trafficking. According to UN, Afghanistan produced 93% of the opium, which easily finds its way even to the streets of New York. The mail wrote on July 21, 2007, the four largest players in the heroin businesses are all senior members of the Afghan government. 
In such circumstances, when enemies of people are in power, life is definitely torturous for the whole nation, particularly women of our country and children. They are deeply fed up in the Taliban in neighboring countries like Iran, Pakistan, and Russia make use from this situation.